Well, former ESCOM Chief Financial Officer Anoj Singh has 21 days to respond to allegations of misconduct while at the power utility. The South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, SICA, is taking the registered accountant to a disciplinary hearing. Now, Singh is said to have contravened the integrity of the profession by allegedly engaging in illegal dealings with the Gupta family. We did invite SICA to speak more on this, uh, but joining me now is... Uh, uh, a member to discuss this further, Rahima Token Mohammed, Legal, Ethics and Compliance Executive at uh, the South African Institute of Professional Accountants. And thank you so much for coming through this morning, Rahima. Thank you for having me. So let's perhaps start by just looking at, uh, you know, the code of ethics that governs accountants, because uh, that seems to have become a real issue in South Africa of late. Yes. So Mr. Singh is not a professional accountant SA, but he's still subject to the same code of ethics as prescribed by IFAC. It's called the IESBA, and I must note that the initial, in the first pages of this code, it actually states that the important and the distinguishing mark of an accountant is its ability or the ability to look after the public interest. So it's very important that they follow the code and that they follow the principles as set out, the five fundamental principles. So looking at this specific case of Anoj Singh and, you know, Saikas uh, citing that he would be hauled before disciplinary committee, one has to ask the question, why only Anoj Singh, uh, given all the revelations that we've seen over the past 18 months or so? It's possible that um, you look in the last few months or uh, the last year, there's been a lot of questionable actions by professional accountants in general. And it's important that SICA as a professional uh, accountancy organization like SIPA stand up and make sure that we take care of the profession. So investigations into our members, whether they are um, junior or senior staff, is important. At SIPA what we do is positive, com um, proactive compliance checks on our members. So it, it's part of the, the normal process and it's important that even if there are other managers that's involved, if they belong to a professional accountancy organization, we need to be told about it after the internal processes have taken place and then we'll take action as well. So from that perspective, I would imagine that you yourself have been very interested in uh, the so-called state capture and events unfolding around that, specifically as it relates to accounting, accountants and accounting bodies. You have um, entities like KPMG. They now have advocates uh, Dumisa and Cebeza uh, how, uh, looking into some of uh, the allegations that have come up against them as well. So you, what sort of role would you play then in that instance? It's become more imperative that we take action against members who are bringing the institutes into disrepute. Last year, on the 15th of July, a new provision was added to the Code of Ethics called NOCLA, which is a non-compliance with laws and regulations. An accountant can't just stand back and say, well, it's got nothing to do with me. If it comes across your table, you need to do something about it, especially if there is a breach of law or any regulation. Regulation. So to what degree, though, when you're saying a breach of law, uh, are we talking about, for example, at municipal level, if um, you have an uh, internal auditor there who transgresses the um, Municipal Finance Management Act, would you be interested at that level as well? It depends on the type of work the professional accountant does. So we don't expect them to understand every law in the country. But if you are working in the public sector, then there is an acknowledgement that you should understand the laws required for your position. Um, and it's not just what the accountants do. If you find a marketing uh, executive or another executive that's doing something wrong and it so happens that the payment has to come via the accounting office, then you need to do something about it. You need to let somebody know in order to stop the non-compliance. So before I get to what this is likely to do or what sort of impact it may have on Anaj Singh's career moving forward, I just want to know from you, what is your view on uh, the psycho citing for Anaj Singh that he should appear before disciplinary committee? I think it's a positive step and it's very welcomed. When we get notice of any member that is doing anything untoward, we also follow our procedure, which is uh, giving them an opportunity 21 days in order to get back to us with their reply to whatever allegations, and then we follow the suit from there. 
and uh, with regard to how this may impact on his career? Well, uh, on the 5th of June, the Southern African region came together and there's a few countries, Mozambique, Malawi, Seychelles, Botswana, Namibia. They came together with South Africa and we signed an agreement that among other things to look after the professional accountants, we would um, share disciplinary information with each other. So you can't have somebody hop to another country or to another professional organization because we need to protect the accounting profession. Um, that's all good and well, but your profession has taken a serious reputational knock. How, how do you mitigate for that? Because as I'm sitting here right now, my perspective is that accountants are pliable. Okay, so in 2016, we initiated, before everything went crazy in the accounting profession, that ethics be a compulsory subject for our continual professional development. And we've been screaming loud about it, making sure that our members sign pledges and do declarations and ensuring that they understand that they are in a position of trust. And as such, they need to with uphold the professional values. And uh, with regard to what's going to happen now with Anoj Singh, do you believe that there should be a few more names that you know, appear before a disciplinary committee along with him? Once the internal procedures have run its course, if you find that there is a professional uh, that's responsible, and it so happens to be any of the other professional accounting bodies, please, it's important that we are notified so that we can also start our investigations into their conduct. But we know that uh, KPMG, once again, they have actually gone you know, one step further into doing an internal investigation. So clearly there's a problem. They've been cited as well in uh, the state of capture. So why haven't you come out to say anything against them, for example? We don't have any members that are implicated at present in any of those matters. But we have taken a stance and said, let's let the accountancy professional body do what is necessary first. Follow protocol. We can't be making judgment when they still haven't concluded their investigations. So it's, it's a process and we need to just accept and respect that. And once it's now in the hands of the Professional Accountancy Institute, their investigations committee and their professional committees will then make a decision on the, uh, whether or not the professional accountant should still be part of the profession. Well, thank you so much for your time this morning. Rahima Token Mohammed, who is the Legal, Ethics and Compliance Executive at the South African Institute of Professional Accountants. Former ESCOM Chief Officer Anaj Singh, he has been uh, given 21 days to respond to allegations of misconduct while he was at ESCOM. And uh, the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants, uh, they are taking the registered accountant to a disciplinary hearing.